All right, uh, before we get started with the homework, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the notes. Uh, the Seaside Resort one that has boat accidents and ice cream sales. If you look at the chart on the left, you'll see that the ice cream sales go from zero to 54 to 110 to 350 and on and on and on. And boating accidents go from zero to one to three to 15 to 28. So as you can see on the chart and on the graph, while time increases, while the number of months increases, right? While the days increase, the number of incidents are also increasing. So as ice cream sales increase, ice, ice cream, I can't spell this morning. Ice cream increases or increases boating accidents. Increase as well. Okay, so that would be if both of them are increasing, both of them are increasing, um, then that would mean that they have a positive correlation, right? They have a positive correlation, positive man, correlation, okay? That's a positive correlation. Now, is, is this an association or a causation? Is it associated information? or is one causing the other, right? Are you licking your ice cream cone and accidentally wrecking your boat? Or are you uh, wrecking your boat and you're like, man, I just lost my boat today. I can really use some ice cream, right? Are they causing each other or are they just associated with each other? I would say that they are probably associated with each other, right? Association, um, because it's not the ice cream sales that are increasing boating accidents. Are people falling asleep at the wheel after enjoying a nice uh, rocky road or chocolate chip or whatever, chunky monkey? No. And are they wrecking boats and saying, mm, you know what feel good right now? You know what hurt, help with my feelings? Ice cream. Uh, no, that is not what's going on. It's not a causation. It is definitely an association. How else could this correlation be explained? Well, what do you do what is or, or look at the months what is the temperature like in those months are you going to go boating when it's you know 10 degrees outside are you going to go boating when it's 40 degrees outside no are you going to get eat ice cream some of y'all will but most people in general are you going to eat ice cream when it's zero degrees outside probably not are you going to eat ice cream when it's 90 degrees outside probably right so both of those are summer month activities, very similar to the shark and ice cream thing. Both of those are summer month activities. So in the summertime, ice cream sales increase, boating accidents increase. <clears throat> so that would be the other way it's cor uh, the correlation could be explained is temperature caused, right? It is temperature caused. So what makes us eat more ice cream? The temperature outside when it gets hotter we eat more ice cream uh what makes us what makes more people go out on the boat great weather temperature okay so when it's 85 or 90 degrees or 95 outside let's go out on the boat let's go skiing let's do all that stuff the more people on the lake the more accidents happen right all right so uh last thing this is determine if the following is an association or causation a controlled experiment showed a positive association between the number of cigarettes smoked and the probability of the number of uh, developing lung cancer well is that an association or is that causation or is lung cancer just happening uh yes are cigarette smokes are, are people smoking cigarettes just regularly yes but does one could one possibly cause the other one right would there be less lung cancer if not as many people smoke that's another way to look at it or if more people smoke would there be more lung cancer uh that one is definitely number one is definitely a causation okay another one is a random sample of students found that owning a cell phone had a negative association with riding the school bus hmm does that mean the more people own cell phones the less people ride school buses no, no. Okay, the more people that own cell phones, the less people that ride school buses. That is not a causation. They don't say, okay, as soon as I get a cell phone, I'm gonna start Ubering everywhere instead of riding the school bus back and forth uh, from school to home. No, when do you get a cell phone? Do you give a kindergartner a cell phone? Maybe some of your brothers and sisters are very young with cell phones, but usually kids get cell phones whenever they start to drive, 
right? Around that age, 15, 16, 17 years old. Okay. So um, the more cell phone increase, the more cell phone ownership increases, the more likely you are to be driving to school. So no, that would be an association, association. One is not causing the other one. It's the age of the student, right? Number three, it says exercising increases the amount of calories burned per minute. Exercise increases the amount of calories burned per minute. That one's directly caused. The more you exercise, the more calories you burn. Okay, definitely directly causation. One cause the other one to happen. The more I exercise, the more calories I burn. Not the more cell phones are owned, the less people ride school buses. That's not true, right? The more I exercise, the more calories I burn. Those are directly caused. Exercising causes the burning of calories, okay? And then finally, number four, a study showed that car owners tend to live longer than people who do not own a car. What? Do you think you magically get 10 or 20 more years because you own a car? No. Okay. Uh, in fact, car owner, uh, it, the more likely, if you own a car, the more likely you are to get in a car accident. So that would be an association. You could not possibly think of owning a car makes you live longer. You don't get a magical 10 years whenever you get a, a you know, a, a Toyota Tundra or something like that. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit pause and get uh, the homework ready to roll. And hopefully I can finish in about eight minutes. All right, number one, it says students in a group of chess teammates submitted data for hours of team practice and the number of matches that the team won. The graph shows the results of the data. Based on the data, if a team practices four and a half hours per week uh, next year, which is the best estimate for the number of chess matches a team could expect to win? So you have that positive correlation graph. You're going to go over to where it's four and a half hours, and then you're going to draw a line up to the graph and over to the y-axis to see where that is. And that's probably, let's see, it's around, it's gonna be around 19. So that's gonna be B, okay? Number two, Juan owns a farm. He collects data on the effects of different amounts of fertilizer in the yard with carrots on his farm. He plots the data on the graph below. How much fertilizer should Juan use to achieve the best results? Well, this one has data that kind of does an arc, right? Um, we're looking for the amount of fertilizer that achieves the best results. So you find where that arc is, you draw a line up, you draw a line over, and that would be around one, around one. Maybe it's definitely not 1.25 because it doesn't go up that high, but around one. So that one would also be, be around one kilogram. Number three, number three says Alana plants several seeds in different pots and tracks the average daily growth of the plants on a scatter plot. The results are shown below. Which of the following conclusions is accurate? We have a bunch. The data looks kind of a little bit crazy. Okay. A little bit crazy. But it says, which of the data conclusions is accurate? The daily plant growth can be graphed using a linear function. Can Does that look like a linear function? Mm. The daily plant growth can be graphed using a quadratic function. Does that look like a a line here? Is it one of these that's linear? Is it one of these? Is that quadratic? The plant growth at an average rate of four centimeters, 0.4 centimeters per day. Uh, that's not really the average. That's kind of the peak. If you look at the top, it's 0.4 right there. And then daily plant growth ranges from zero to 0.4 centimeters. That is 100% true. Okay. The highest it went was 0.4. The lowest one was zero. So that would be D. It is not a linear path unless you just say it's one of those, but it's not. Uh, eh, it's not going to be that way because there's a bunch of stuff up front here. Okay. Number four. Uh, number four says uh, the graph below shows the number of points scored by a high school basketball team on a given day. Which of the following statements would be an invalid conclusion? An invalid conclusion. This one has a bunch of dots over here. Okay. Which would be an invalid conclusion? The average score of the winning team was less than 65 points. The average score of the winning team was less than 65 points. Um, eh. Well, it, you have kind of a trend line like that, but the average score is less than 65. Um, yeah, that would be a valid conclusion. Uh, the average score of the losing team was more than 40. 
If you look at the losing team, the average score is definitely more than 40. Yeah, but we're looking for an invalid conclusion. The average difference score was less than 20 points. Um, let's see, less than 20 points. You find a few of these points, and it says, like, um, there's one at 45 for the losing team and 50 for the winning team. You look at the highest one, and it's 75 for the losing team and 75 for the winning team or somewhere around there. Um, it seems like the more – each team scores, we have a positive correlation, right? The more e the winning team scores, the more the losing team scores as well. So I'd venture to say that it's less than 20 points, yeah? So that would be a valid conclusion. And it says the average total point score was more than 120. Did anyone score more than 80? No. So D is your invalid conclusion. They did not score more than 120. The scatter plot number five. The scatter plot shows um, the algebra grades and the number of absences of different students from the first semester. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the scatter plot? Uh, it says as the number of absences increases, algebra grades stay the same. No, because we have a negative trend line, right? So as the absences increase, the grades fall. Uh, B. The students who have fewer absences seem to have higher algebra grades. That's definitely true. Fewer absences, higher algebra grades. C, the students who have the most absences seem to have higher grades. No, that would be up here, and that doesn't exist. And then D, as the number of absences decrease, the algebra grades stay the same. That is also not true because we have a negative trend line here. Um, so the answer would be the number of absences increase. Uh, sorry, the fewer absences, the higher the grades B. All right, number six. Determine if the following is an association or causation for six, seven, eight, and nine. So six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, a controlled experiment is showed, showed a positive association between the number of hours using headphones and listening to music and the level of hearing loss. I think those are directly related, right? The more you keep an earbud in your ear, the, the more hear loss you're going to have, the higher the level of the hear loss. So I would venture to say that that is a causation. Number seven, the average cost of tuition increases. The number of electric cars in the United States also increases. I don't think that's true. The higher the tuition, the more electric cars. Where's the core, where's the cause, right? Uh, do we Are we dependent on electric cars to lower tuition? Is that what we're saying? I don't know what they're saying. So I would say that that is an association. I think that's a sign of technology and time, right? Time and technology and uh, prestige are increasing college tuition. Time and technology are increasing the, the probability of electric cars, the number of electric cars. Um, number eight, a survey showed that sleeping with a light on was positively associated with nearsightedness. Positively associated with, maybe sleeping with the light on causes nearsighted. I don't, I don't know. Would sleeping with the light off take away nearsightedness. So I would venture to say that this is an association. I, I can't see the correlation behind that. Sleeping with the light on was a positive association with nearsightedness. I just, uh, maybe, maybe, because they're both, meh. think about that one. Think of that, about that one for a bit. Maybe, causation or association. Um, and then number nine, hours spent studying on an exam, increasing the percentage of problems answered correctly. Uh, Hours spent studying on an exam, increasing the percentage of problems answered correctly, of course. That one is definitely a causation. That one's definitely a causation. Um, so back to number eight. I would like that to be our Google Classroom question for the day. I know what I think. I've kind of made my own conclusion while thinking about number nine. Um, so that is your Google Classroom question. Give me your explanation. Is it an association or is it a causation? And give me your reasoning why. Uh, I need at least three to five sentences. All right. Have a great day.